You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. I feel like who art Ed? I'm trying to spice it. Who art Ed? Mr. Wood, art Ed, me. Yeah. Either way, it, 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 it works on art. I know. That's off to great start. Welcome to Who Arted, weekly art history for all ages. I'm your host, Kyle Wood. Now, before I get started, I want to give a quick shout out and a thank you to Abigail Green of CourseStorm.com. I saw that she recently posted on her blog listing the best art podcasts for arts organizations, educators, and creatives, and I was honored that she included Who Arted on that list. Um, Another favorite of mine mentioned on her blog post was the Teaching Artist podcast. Now, if that name sounds familiar, longtime listeners might recall hearing of uh, the Teaching Artist podcast. She was my guest back on the Cause episode um, and also just a fantastic person helping me out. Uh, I think she came on as my guest uh, when I had a last minute cancellation and um, incredibly generous with her time. So if you're looking for other arts and education related podcasts, I will link to that blog post podcast list on Course Storm, but of course, I would also highly recommend the Teaching Artist podcast if you're not already subscribed. But on to today's topic. For this mini episode, we're going to be unraveling some of the secrets in the Book of the Dead from Ancient Egypt. Now, the Book of the Dead originated in ancient Egypt around 1550 BCE during the New Kingdom period. Contrary to the name, it's not really a book as we conceive of it today. Uh, It's rather sort of a collection of ancient Egyptian funerary texts. They were intended to guide and protect the deceased in their journey through the afterlife. They were made using papyrus, a material from reeds of the cypress papyrus plant. The Egyptians would flatten and press these reeds into sheets, creating a nice sort of durable writing surface, similar to paper, but not exactly the same. Intricate scenes and figures were meticulously drawn and painted using various pigments derived from natural resources. Colors like red, blue, green, and yellow were commonly used and held symbolic significance. The artists would apply these pigments using brushes made of reeds or finely crafted wooden sticks. I think to better understand the work, though, it's helpful to break down just a single portion to get a little more specific detail. And in this case, I'm going to focus on the page from the Book of the Dead that depicts the Last Judgment of Hunifer, uh, because that's on the AP art history list for all those high school students in the U.S. trying to cram information about 250 works so they can get a little bit of college credit. This particular scene is found on papyrus dating back to around 1275 BCE during the 19th dynasty. It portrays Hunifer, a scribe priest, standing before the god Osiris, the ruler of the underworld, along with a panel of 42 divine judges. When looking at this and similar works, one of the first things people notice is the unusual visual style that characterizes Egyptian art, or at least ancient Egyptian art. Ancient Egyptian artists depicted figures in these contorted poses and a range of sizes that seemed disproportionate. But why? Well, In ancient Egyptian culture, the contorted poses in the artwork were the result of combining different viewpoints in a single image. The idea was to show each figure from its ideal and most recognizable view. The feet would be in profile, the torso would be facing front, the head would be again in profile. This allowed the deceased to be easily identified in the afterlife. I look at these as being more about symbol than realism. Along similar lines, Egyptian artists used scale or size relationships differently than the way we are typically taught today. Linear perspective teaches us 
that something in the foreground will look bigger and something farther away will look smaller. But ancient Egyptian artists weren't using scale to show distance. They were using scale or size to show significance. We call this hierarchical scale. Hierarchical scale was a way to convey the importance and social status of the depicted individuals. In the scene of Hunifer's judgment, we observe Osiris, the central figure, shown as larger than life, symbolizing his divine power. The other figures, including Hunifer, are shown in smaller scales to indicate their subordinate position in the afterlife hierarchy. They're sort of a lower status, and therefore they're going to be smaller figures. So what does this sort of work tell us about ancient Egyptian culture, the norms, the mythology? The last judgment scene depicted in the Book of the Dead was believed to be a crucial part of the deceased's journey to the afterlife. The scene reads from left to right. To the left, Anubis brings Hunifer into the judgment area. Anubis is also shown supervising the judgment scales. It showcases the Egyptian belief in this elaborate system of divine judgment where one's heart is weighed against the feather of mat. I know I sound like a goat there, but it's M-A-A-T, doing my best on pronunciation, but it's the goddess of truth and justice. They believed that the heart, rather than the brain, was the center of human emotion and wisdom. The heart also held a person's memories. Now, with that in mind, or maybe taking that belief to heart, they considered the heart to be the most important internal organ. It could reveal a person's true character, even after death, so the heart would be left in during mummification. The judgment weighing the heart would determine one's afterlife. People wrote spells to try to prevent the heart from testifying against them by weighing down the scales in that final judgment. If the heart weighed more than Mott's feather, the dead person was condemned to non-existence and immediately consumed by a ferocious monster shown as part crocodile, part lion, part hippopotamus, and all kinds of awful. It seems like a pretty high-stakes test and a rough way to start things off in the netherworld, although I suppose if you were a mummy, you'd probably be having a pretty bad day regardless. Still, for the pharaohs, scribes, and priests, much of their work and life was focused on the quest for eternity in that afterlife. Hunifer was referred to as the royal scribe and scribe of divine offerings, steward of King Seti I. With those titles, Hunifer would have been high up in the administration, very close with the king. The Book of the Dead and similar artworks highlight the profound reverence ancient Egyptians held for their gods and the intricate rituals they followed to ensure a successful transition to the netherworld where they could live on forever. Thank you for sharing some of your time with me to explore a bit of ancient Egyptian art and mythology. Hopefully, these last 10 minutes or so with me didn't feel like an eternity. Unless you're an ancient Egyptian mummy and you're into that sort of thing. I'm not here to judge. This concludes this week's episode of Who Arted, part of the Airwave Media Podcast Network. If you found this tolerable, please leave a rating or review on your favorite podcast app. You can find images of the work being discussed this week and every week on social media at Who Arted Podcast on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And of course, on the website, whoartedpodcast.com. Podcast done.